Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft. And if you are a V-Carb user, you are probably like most of us V-Carb users out there where you don't understand the move and rotate functions in V-Carb. Well, I was like that too, and I had to figure it out. And I knew as soon as I figured it out, I got to pass this information on to you because these move and rotate functions save us a lot of time when we really understand them. In fact, you're going to be learning a very unusual technique in this video that someone may approach you and say, I'm having this kind of problem. And you'll say, well, why don't you do that? And they'll be thinking, that's brilliant. I never thought of that. How did you come up with that? You know, it was just one of these things that just a big aha. This is like making things work beyond. So you're going to learn a lot of stuff. What led me up to forcing myself to learn rotate and move and finding angles, like reverse engineering, was a company approached me to evaluate tools. And this is the first one, this one inch facing tool. And I said, absolutely, but what's in it for you? The person who's watching my channel. And they said, well, we can give you discount codes. So I said, now we're talking because that's my ultimate goal is to make tooling, good quality carbide tooling available to you that's at a much more reasonable price. You know, not the brand name price, just $30 end mills. I want to give you $15 end mills. So that's the ultimate goal. So that's uh, stay tuned to the channel. Anyway, with this uh, rotate and move function, like I said, you're going to be learning some really unusual techniques here. This information is going to put you a cut above most V-Carb users. And that's the kind of information I am happy to pass on to you. So what I'm going to be doing is taking you out to the router and showing you what led up to me learning how to do this. And then I'm going to translate this information into you by diving into V-Carb. Now, just before we go into that, I just want to tell you something that popped up that was kind of unusual. I was looking at the view rate of the how-to videos that I do on VCARB. And it seems that about 50% of the people drop off at about 50% of the video. And it reminded me of something my mentor told me a couple of years ago when we were talking about a project I was working on. Or right in the middle, she cut me off. She said, you know what, Garrett? How you do anything is how you do everything. I said, what do you mean? She said, Garrett, you are shortcutting all these little things that we are talking about. And that habit is keeping you from your success. I was like a lot of people. I'd watch a video halfway through and then, you know, cut it off. I thought, I'm bored, whatever. And I realized that that habit translates into everything that I do. And I realized that sometimes these kind of videos can be boring and people just go, okay, this, this is getting too long. But I also realized that when I would do that, I would miss half the detail. Now, the people that do that, I can't do anything about that, but it breaks my heart that people aren't aware of that. I mean, I know that's not you. So, I don't know, it's just one of those moral lessons. Anyway, I'm taking up a lot of time here. Let's go out to the router. I'm gonna explain this, and then we're gonna get into V-Carb, and you're gonna learn some amazing stuff, plus a very unusual technique, so stick around. We're out at my Bob's E4 CNC router, which I love, by the way. And you can see that it has been worked a lot. I got all kinds of cuts on my spoil board. And in order to test this facing tool, I've got to resurface my spoil board. Now, just to let you know, when I test this tool, I am going to push it well past its limits. In the meantime, I wanted to make sure my router is set properly so I could get a very good test out of this. And what I found was my router was out of tram, meaning it was out of square that way. And so I had to take things apart and I serviced it anyway, it needed it. Then I wanted to make sure this router was ready to go in order to test this tool effectively. As a part of that, I rotated my router around 180 degrees. I did have this locking pin rotated back that way, which didn't bother me a whole lot, and I worked with it. In fact, I created a dust shoe that would fit over it, and it worked great, but now it's no good. This area right here, it's a cutout for the locking pin part, um, needs to rotate around. Now, when I did the original design, I didn't do a lot of accurate measurements or close measurements, so when this dust boot went on, it was actually on at an angle because I did not measure the angle of this assembly properly. Now we're doing it properly. So one of the things I did was take my camera 
and I set it on the router bed just like this and snapped a picture and then did a measurement to see what the proper angle of the shaft lock is relative to the front of the machine. When we get in a V-carve, I'll show you how I checked that angle and then I was able to move this slot around to the exact angle that I wanted it to and get it into the exact position. So I hope that it made sense to you. We're going to dive into V-carve into this design and I'm going to show you how all this works. So now I'm in V-carve and this is the vacuum block drawing that I created. What I need to do is get this little area right here so that it is coming up through this way. But what I want to do is just get everything reoriented to the way I want it to be and then figure out exactly what angle this needs to be at. So what I'm going to do is first of all figure out what angle this whole design is at and I'm going to rotate it to the angle that I want which is going to be 90 degrees that way side to side. 90 degrees that's actually zero degrees on the positive it would be 180 over on this side. So let's figure out first of all what the angle is. So we're going to rotate this. This is the first part of the move. The way I'm going to do that is by grabbing the dimension line right here. And I'm going to click that. And I'm simply going to hover over. Well, first of all, you have to make sure your snaps are turned on up here. And the reason is because I want this to grab the center of the, this little arc right here. And you can see as I hover over the arc, all these little dash lines are coming up. When I move to the center of the arc, there's a little dot that shows up. And my target has changed. So if you look at my cursor, it keeps changing shapes. When I come down to that center, it turns into a bullseye. That means it's going to grab that center point. So I'm going to grab that. Now what I want to do is make sure I'm clear so I can grab the other center point up here. So now that I have that, I click it. I don't hold, I just click with my left mouse button. And then just kind of hover over this circle here and then come up until it snaps to the middle. And the way you'll know that it snaps to the middle is it just creates another point. And if you look off to the left, I can't change. Well, let's see if I can do this. Okay, so I clicked it. And now if you look to the left, you can see that my angle says 36. 0.673 degrees. So what I want to do is rotate this minus 36.673 degrees. So I'm going to escape out of this dimension. I'm going to grab the entire block and I'm going to click it again. And I'm going to grab the outer bubble on the corner there. And I'm going to just hold it and pull it. And then I'm just going to type in while I'm holding it. While I'm holding this, the left mouse key down, I'm going to type in minus 36.673 and enter. And now it rotated over. Now, now let's double check our angle again. Now we're going to go back to our measuring tool. Click it. Hover over that arc until it snaps on the center. We're going to click that, and then we are going to come over to the other one. Click that, and now we're going to see what our dimension is, and it is now zero, zero. So that's how you figure out how to rotate to the uh, angle that you want. All right, I wanted to cut out a V-card for just a second, because this is the moment that I was telling you about where you are going to learn something really unusual. So by the time we're done with this, you're going to be going, that was brilliant. And you're going to have that in your head. So <laughs> that's really cool that I can give you this kind of information. So let's get back into V-Carve and learn this very unusual technique. And the next step is to take this element here and figure out exactly what angle it is relative to this plane right here. I'll draw the plane so you know. Looking down at the router, the, the shaft lock is over in this area somewhere. But I don't know exactly what angle I want it to be at. And right now, this is roughly at 45 degrees uh, off of the crosshair 
that would be here. Not quite, but I need to know exactly what that is. So what I did was take a picture, and let me import that picture so you see exactly what I'm talking about. We import it, so you can see I took a picture of it from the bottom. Now I'm going to move this picture over a little bit, just so it's out of the way. And you can see this picture is actually mirrored in a way I don't want it to be. But that's okay. That's going to give me my angle I want. But let's turn, let's get this thing to the angle that we want. So I'm going to rotate that. Now I'm going in the positive rotation. So I'm just going to type in 90 and enter. And there it rotated at 90. Now I want to mirror this so that this part is at the right angle for the vacuum block as if I'm looking down from the top of the router. So I'm going to escape and select the image again. And then I'm going to use the mirror function right here. I'm going to click that and I'm just going to mirror it uh, vertical. And what that's going to do is going to mirror it off of the zero line right here. So I hit mirror ver vertical. There we go. Now we've got it. And you can see my pretty face right up there. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle on this and then draw a line from center point out to the approximate edge right over here that would look like it would come off of center. So I'm going to draw a circle. We're going to get to this. What I'm trying to do is figure out what that, what the proper location for this element over here is. So I'm going to put that circle approximately on center. And I'm going to hold my left mouse key, drag it out until I'm out at the router boundary. Okay, and then I'm going to escape. And my circle is still highlighted. You can see by the pink line. And now I just want to try to make sure the circle is on center as best as possible. You can see up here there's a little bit of a, uh, uh, the circle is on the inside of the router boundary right there. And down here it's at the router boundary. So we're just going to generally ballpark this to about the best we can. So it looks like it's not quite halfway through the boundary there. There, that's about halfway. And I'm going to come over here. So I overshot just a little bit. So we're going to come back just a couple notches. Now I'm moving that circle by pressing the cursor key. All right, I'll buy that. Now I need to get it center left to right. And so I'm going to touch that cursor key a couple of times. And look at it from here. So I'm just on the inside of the radio, uh, router outer circumference. And over here, I'm just on the inside, very close to what I want. This is going to be enough to give me a decent line. So now what I'm going to do is just grab a line right over here, a poly line or a straight line. I'm going to click it, and I'm going to hover over the circle. And then I'm going to come over to the middle. The reason I hovered over the circle is so if you can see in the image, I've got a crosshair right now. My cursor is a crosshair, and there's a hatched crosshair because my snaps are turned on up here. And so what it's doing by hovering over the circle, VCarve knows that I am using the circle as a reference point. And once I get the hashed crosshair in the middle, and my cursor is turned into a bullseye, I can click it, and that's where I'll start my line at. And now my line... It started roughly on the center there. It's a little bit off center. So I'm going to try this again. I'm going to escape, go back to line again. And I'm going to just pick that circle again. And we're going to come down until I get my crosshair. So it looks like the crosshair is off a little bit. So we're going to go off to what we want as a center. So I'm going to escape one more time. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to remove that snap that it grabbed before, so it's not looking for that. I'm going to click on center, and then I'm going to hold my button down so I can zoom out and move things around. And I'm going to draw a line right out about there, and if you can see on my cursor, there are, there's an angle being shown. So what my angle is, is roughly 
35 degrees. So my cutout has to be 35 degrees off of the horizontal. So that's all I need with this. That's how you can uh, figure out what you need to do as far as angles. So this guy has to be rotated 35 degrees from this line right here. So first of all, let's just pull it out of here. I'm going to click it twice and drag it up. And then I've got to figure out what angle it's at. And then I want to get it rotated around to the right angle. And the way I do that is I will click Dimension again. And I'm going to hover over that arc right here. And then come on in until I get my center point. And you see my cursor turned into a target. And I've got a little dot selected. That dot is the center of the circle. So I'm clicking that. Then I'm going to come over and I'm just going to hover over that line. And what it's going to do is it's going to snap to the center point of that line. And now I can look at my dimension, which I am 134.716 degrees. Excellent. So I'm going to grab this, click it twice, and I'm going to rotate. Oh, and I'm going to rotate minus. 134.716. Enter. And that did not take me to where I wanted to go. So let's undo that and do this again. We know that I'm at 134.76. So at 134 is that way. It should come up that way. Let's just do another measure on that. I'm going to do it again. Got my point. I got this point. That is 134.716. So I'm going to grab this, click it again, and I want to rotate it. Not 134 is going to be this way. So we're going to rotate it in a positive direction. So we're going to say 134.716. Is that right? Yep. And enter. And now we're positive. Now, if you end up rotating it the wrong way, just control Z and go in the opposite direction. <clears throat> so now I need to rotate it another 35 degrees. So I'm going to grab that again and go 35, enter. Okay, so now this guy needs to be moved to the very to the right location. That center of that circle needs to be over here at that center point right down here. So we're going to try this first. I'm clicking that, and then I'm going to use this function move under transform objects. So we're going to click that, and I'm going to try to highlight on the arc. And it's not allowing me to highlight on the center of the circle. So that was one way. I just thought maybe I could try that. What I'm going to do instead is grab a line, and I'm going to create that line right at the... Um, one of these center points right here and I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to hover over that arc and then I'm going to come down until I get my bullseye and there's my bullseye so I clicked it and now I'm going to hit escape and now I'm going to select all these go back to the move function click it and now I'm going to hover over that area now watch my cursor you can see it's an arrow with a little plus but once I get to the end there, I get this little four-way arrow. That means I'm grabbing right on the end of that line. I click it, and I bring it down until it snaps onto, you see I got a bullseye. You can just actually see it snap. You see the little dot right at the end of that line. That means it's snapping there. And now this component is angled properly. And there you have it. Rotate, move, and a very unusual technique. Um, you want to check the descriptions down below. There's lots of links down there. I do videos for CNC routers for beginners, VCard for beginners, and CNC entrepreneurialism if you want to make money with your CNC router. If you found this video helpful, thumbs up, please, and perhaps a comment. You got some new knowledge in your head now that most VCard users don't have. That's very cool. All right. Have yourself a great day, and I will talk to you next time.